If it's not illegal, it's highly unethical. A North Idaho internet provider is blocking Facebook and Twitter from its Wi-Fi services for some customers. The company provides internet for North Idaho and the Spokane area. He said we won't be able to bring staff back until after that point, at least. Some indoor recreation and fitness centers can open today under Washington's phase one guidelines. One business happy to be open, but they still say it's a long way back to normal. And in weather, we're tracking lots of rain and very strong winds. Your forecast is up next. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Andrahan. Welcome everyone. I'm Whitney Ward. A North Idaho internet provider is blocking Facebook and Twitter from its Wi-Fi service for some customers. The company claims that Facebook and Twitter are censoring people, so it plans to in turn block its customers from accessing those sites. The move comes after the platform banned President Trump following last week's deadly insurrection at the Capitol. Grim 2's Amanda Rowley shares what we know so far. A North Idaho internet provider is giving its customers the option to block Facebook and Twitter due to censorship claims. Your T1 Wi-Fi provides internet services to North Idaho and the Spokane area. In a recent email to customers, your T1 Wi-Fi says only customers who want to block Twitter or Facebook need to contact the company in order to request this. The move comes after Twitter and Facebook banned President Trump from their platforms. The companies say this is due to incitement of violence and undermining the transition of power to President-elect Joe Biden. Your T1 Wi-Fi wrote in an email it's been fielding calls from customers who do not want these sites allowed on their internet and do not want their children visiting these sites. It adds customers can do this themselves, but some lack the technical knowledge to do so. One customer was surprised by this email. Krista Yep insists this is a politically charged decision by the company. If it's not illegal, it's highly unethical. Yep lives in Spokane, but uses the Priest River, Idaho based internet company's services for her family cabin. You can just not go to those sites or use them. Because the whole point of going to the sites is if you have an account. So just don't have an account. Although the company says it's a customer's choice for these sites to be blocked, this still does not sit well with Yep. She plans to cancel her service. I don't want to pay almost $800 to a person or company or whatever that's this unhinged and this kind of down the rabbit hole of conspiracy theories. We've asked the company for comment and further clarification, but we've only been able to go off of emails sent to customers. While your T1 Wi-Fi says they acted in response to censorship, the company's actions could also be considered censorship. They may also be violating Washington State's net neutrality law, which does not allow internet providers to manipulate access to content. A spokesperson for the Washington State Attorney General's office said the Consumer Protection Division was taking a look at the matter. Idaho does not have the same law. A representative for Idaho's Attorney General said their office lacks the original jurisdiction for any enforcement. The service provider says the change would go into effect on Wednesday. Amanda Rowley, Krem 2 News. Governor Jay Inslee's new reopening plan for Washington takes effect today. Every region in the state currently starts in phase one. So to move on to phase two, the region must meet the following four targets. 10% decreasing trend in case rates, 10% decrease in coronavirus hospital admissions, ICU occupancy that is less than 90%, and test positivity rate less than 10%. In phase one, indoor social gatherings are prohibited. Indoor worship services, retail stores, and professional and personal services are limited to just 25% capacity. Indoor dining remains prohibited and outdoor dining is limited to just six people a table or two households per table. Now some indoor recreation and fitness centers can open today under these phase one guidelines. That means dance academies, rock gyms and fitness centers can host low risk sports practices and training as long as there are no more than five people in a group. Our Morgan Trow spoke with one tennis club today that's happy to be open but says it's a long way to being back to normal. After months of being closed, Spokane Racquet Club members are back hitting the courts. But they didn't know they would have to bundle up to break a sweat. 
The temperature of the tennis courts is 36 degrees. The almost freezing club is full of eager members, just happy to let off some steam. Indoor low-risk sports are finally permitted under Governor Inslee's new reopening guidelines, with some safety protocols. Masks are required and reservations must be made ahead of time. It's kind of like the silver lining story of bad things come in threes and we've had that was kind of our third bad thing. The Spokane Racquet Club had a devastating 2020, regardless of the pandemic and the shutdowns. Board member Luke Zitterkoff says first a car crashed into the side of the building, then the pool system needed numerous repairs, and now the heater broke. With the pandemic, some members are having to choose between rent and a sporting club, and rent wins every time. During the shutdown time, I think that's been the hardest for us on record as far as how many people have been forced to leave. Club manager Kay Menzies says two-thirds of the heater costs over $65,000. Your choice had to be made, install a heater or continue with staff. They are staying positive despite what looks like an uphill battle. Now that they are legally allowed to be open, they are hoping new players will join their team. Because once you hit three bad events in a row, Zitterkoff says you should be in the clear. Although the cost is substantial, we feel like it will pay off in the long run because membership will be more comfortable. The heater should be installed in early February, so members will be able to work out without their winter clothes on soon. Reporting in Spokane, Morgan Traub, Krem 2 News. The Spokane Regional Health District reporting 283 new cases of coronavirus today. 11 new deaths have also been reported. 119 COVID-19 patients are currently in the hospital. In North Idaho, 363 new cases have been reported today. The Panhandle Health District is reporting five new deaths since Saturday. Kootenai County's new sheriff, Robert Norris, says he will not enforce mandates aimed at curbing the spread of COVID. He said today in part, it's my opinion that the facts are becoming clear with COVID-19. Certain risk groups should take extra precautions, but he says the vast majority of healthy people who contract COVID-19 will experience flu symptoms and recover from the virus. Now, face coverings are required in North Idaho through at least January 19th. That's after the Panhandle Health District Board passed a mask mandate back in November. Now there are exceptions for kids as well as people who have existing medical conditions. As Spokane Public Schools gets ready to bring more students back into the classroom, they have opened a COVID-19 rapid testing clinic at Chase Middle School. This week from 9 a.m. until noon, staff and students from Spokane Public Schools can get a free test at Chase Middle School via curbside testing. Next week, the same services will be available at Shadle Park High School. For everybody to stay safe, including the, the, the school, that we needed them to be tested uh, in order for them to come back to school so I can go back to work and everything so we can get on with our lives. Uh, just make sure everything's safe. Spokane Public Schools is one of 10 districts in the state of Washington that has chosen to participate in the COVID-19 testing program. All right, another week of wet weather still ahead of us and perhaps some wind could be joining into that. Tom Sherry is here now with what we can expect here over the next couple of days, Tom. Yeah, the rain has already moved into the Spokane area. That's a live picture of downtown. You can see the roadways there are definitely on the wet side. When we talk about what we've got going on with the advisories and the watches and warnings, let's get right to it. High wind watch in effect everywhere that's shaded in gold and that includes the Spokane and Coeur d'Alene area. That high wind, the highest winds will actually start Tuesday, Tuesday night into Wednesday evening, uh, expiring at about Wednesday at 7 in the evening. We could see some wind gusts potentially on Wednesday up to 60 miles per hour. Winter storm warning in effect until Tuesday at 4 in the afternoon. That's the Okanagan Highlands as well as into the northern Cascades. We take a look at the current temperature. It's 37 degrees. Not much in the wind department right now. Again, we're going to save that for tomorrow and into Wednesday. Wind out of the southeast at 6 miles an hour. There's the rain that is occurring across the Spokane area, but most of the rain, as I mentioned before, is all going to arrive tomorrow and tomorrow night. 36 will be the overnight low tonight with uh, rain, mostly rain. I guess it could mix with a little bit of snow, but gosh, at 36, I'm, I'm not very confident of that. And we've got very mild temperatures. Wind gusts tomorrow up around 30 and a high of 43 expected on your Tuesday. When we look at the weekend, I've got uh, highs around 38 for both days. We'll look for mostly cloudy skies Saturday and Sunday.
Chance of a little rain and snow maybe on Sunday. I'll check the rest of your seven day forecast coming right up. Talk to you then, Tom. Thank you very much. The WSU women's basketball team achieved a program first today, getting ranked in the AP Top 25. Yep, that's right. They have never been ranked before. The women came in at number 25 after beating previously seventh ranked Arizona in overtime on Sunday. Freshman Charlize Ledger Walker scored the game winning bucket at the buzzer to defeat the Wildcats 71 to 69. WSU becomes the last of the power five programs to earn a top 25 appearance with the raking. Very cool. Go Cougs. Still had Democratic lawmakers adamant about removing President Trump from Capitol Hill. When we come back, why they say they'll move to impeach if the 25th Amendment is not invoked. Plus, after President Trump was banned from various social media platforms over the weekend, there have been a lot of claims about those platforms violating the First Amendment. So is that true? We verify next. <laughs>